You are watching Eswatini TV. Sibu was a Welcome to Home Study, a tele-education program that is an emergency response to the novel virus. COVID-19 that has seen the entire world going through emergency lockdown to fight the pandemic. My name is Lirato Mabilisa and with me today is our sign language interpreter Nompumele Lohadebe and my colleague Nogazi Lamini. Good afternoon Nogazi. Good afternoon Lerato and of course good afternoon to the viewer back home. And yes Lerato the world seems to be at war with this virus but what is important is the medical practitioners who are our heroes who are in the front line of this pandemic. You too viewer can become a hero by adhering to the government's lockdown requirements. By being a hero, you just need to stay at home for the first time in history. You stay at home, you get to watch TV, you get to eat as much as you possibly can, and of course, observe social distancing. Yes. If we want this to work, good people, let us stay at home. Yes. No, Wazi, we're airing live, and today is Easter Monday. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes, um, you're correct. What is the significance of um, this day in history? Well, Lerato, it has a religious significance because it is the day after Christians believe that Christ came back to earth. Uh, he spent 40 days mm -hmm. uh, uh, ministering and also appearing to people. Uh, he healed a lot of souls and he also made the doubters believe that he is the son of God. That's very interesting, Nogwazi. Very, very interesting. So, Lerato, what does our timetable look like today? Well, um, our timetable for today is English language for the grade 7 learners from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. and then science for the JC learners from 2.30 p.m. to um, 3.08 p.m. and then religious education for JC which is from 3 um, from 3.08 p.m. to 3.46 p.m. and then chemistry for EGCSE from um, 3.46 p.m. to 4.24 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then lastly is physics from, e oh, for EGCSE, sorry, um, which is the form fives, from 4.24 p.m. to um, 5.02 p.m. All right, I think what is, what is important to note is the fact that uh, we are using Friday's timetable because it was a holiday. So today's lessons, which is Monday, will be moved to tomorrow and so forth and so forth. Um, please tell our viewers about uh, our social media platforms, Lerato. Well, our social media platforms are as follows. We have um, YouTube, where we air live, same time we air live on Eswatini TV. We also have our Facebook page, Written Eswatini TV. Please, dear viewer, beware of scams and only um, tune in to pages Written Eswatini TV. Yes, that's very important to note. And also there's a reminder that we do have a WhatsApp line which pops up now, now and again. Uh, please make use of it. Please do not call us. Text us any questions that you might have. Please do not call us because we're not going to answer. <laughs> Without wasting any time, uh, let's take a quick commercial break. Lerato will be right back with our grade 7 English teacher, Mr. Kanya Gwezwe Lamini. Am I right, Lerato? You are right. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Favorite personality or celebrity. Now imagine if they had to do a job that you never saw them doing. You don't have to imagine. We'll show you. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> hey, really? Asam Bege is back. This is the show that takes your favorite celebrity and personality and gives them the challenge of doing a job that some people do every day. Can they do it? 
Will they crumble under the pressure? Find out in the brand new season of Assam Beget. Welcome back, dear viewer. Our first lesson for today is English language for the grade 7 learners. And our topic is composition writing, but we're going to be focusing on narrative writing today. With me in studio is Mr. Kanyagwezwe Lamini, who is going to be teaching our grade 7 learners, and the sign language interpreters Nombumele Lohatebe and Linda Mamba. Um, good afternoon and welcome to our Teller um, Education Program Home Study, Mr. Lamini. Good afternoon, Lerato. How are you? Great day indeed. It is a great day, Mr. Lamini. As I have mentioned earlier, we're going to be learning about composition writing and we're going to be focusing on the narrative writing. Mr. Lamini, narrative writing um, is about being able to tell an engaging, compelling, and contextual relevant story. What are today's objectives? Thank you, Lerato. This is aimed at developing the writing skill. As you will remember that, writing is one of the language skills aimed at, develop, at being developed in the teaching of English language. It also will help our grade seven deepen their understanding of the English language as they apply the language usage in their writings. And of course, Lerato, we are looking forward for my grade sevens. They are going to be the future authors and writers. Hence, this is going to sharpen their potential and skill of writing good stories. I hope we're all ready with our notebooks, pens and pencils, dear Great Sevens. Without wasting time, Mr. Lamini, please take us through. Thank you, Lerato. Good afternoon, my Great Sevens and viewers at home. Yes, we said we are going to look at composition writing, which is creative continuous writing under the subtopic, the narrative. Let us start by looking at the objectives of the lesson for today. We are going to define a narrative. You will also be able to discuss the components of a narrative. And of course, you must be able to state the structure of a composition. Now, with you, my grade sevens, please prepare a pen, a paper, and a ruler. Lerato, if I may ask you, how would you express your experiences, or if you've just seen something happening somewhere, how would you express that if you meet a friend? Well, I'd probably express it um, through um, speech. Is that a correct answer, though? Absolutely. Okay. Now, my dear grade sevens, let us look at defining the narrative. A narrative is a series of events told or written about things in the past, present, or future. Now, it is a series of events. That is, one event coming after the other. A series of events. They may be told or written. These events should come in a certain order. And these events may tell us something that happened in the past, the present, or future. We can just say a narrative is a story. 
Now, let us look at some of the elements that make up a story. It is not every piece of writing that we can say it is a story. But there are certain elements that qualify a piece of writing to be a story. The first one is the setting. By setting, we are referring to the time, place, and mood of the story. Now, let us look at some examples of the time. It can be an hour, it can be minutes, it can be a week, it can be a day, it can be a month, it can be a season or a year. Just to mention some few examples. Now, my dear learners at home, let us look at an example of a setting of a story. It was during the Easter holidays in 2019 when heavy rains damaged some parts of Mbabani. Now, going back to the setting, we said this should be the time, the place, and perhaps the mood of the story. Now, in our example, the time is during the Easter holidays in 2019. And what, what was the mood of the story in the beginning? We can see that it is a sad mood. There were heavy rains, and these rains damaged some parts of Mbabani. So from the onset, we can get that this, the mood of the story is just a set mood. And then the place, absolutely, it is Mbabani. The second element of a story, my dear grade seven, hope you are following very well, is or are the characters. Characters can be human beings or they may be animal characters. For example, Mr. P.K. Lamin, who is just teaching you right now, can be a character. He's an example of a human character. We also have a lion. Like in the example here, there is Mr. Mklongo as a human character. We also have a lion as an animal character. I hope you are bearing in mind that right now we've touched on two elements of a story. And then we move on to the third one, which is the dramatic action. We've been talking about characters. These characters, they are not just employed into the story and then become silent. What do you think? How would you feel reading a story where the characters are just doing nothing? Of course, it could be boring. So, characters are very vital in story writing. The characters speak and do quite a lot of things. Like, they laugh, they frown, they can also shout. Those are some of the things that the characters do in the story as it develops. Then, the last aspect amongst the few that we have chosen is the plot. Now, my dear grade 7, please understand this very well. I'm not talking about the plot that you make in the agriculture garden. This is a plot that we discuss when we are telling or writing stories. 
By plot, we mean the order of events. You remember when we defined a, a narrative, we said it is a sequence of events. Now, in the plot, the events should come in a certain order. So this is an order of events. That is where we get the problem and how it complicates up to the climax and how the problem was solved. Now, my learners at home, I want us now to go through a certain story so that after reading this story, we will be able to identify the four elements that we have just discussed. As I read the story, I will do the reading. Your task is to follow silently. I am not going to highlight anything because after the first reading, we will come back to the story and then identify the setting, the characters, the plot, and some of the dramatic actions. Now I read. You are following silently. In the early 1940s, a king lived with his people in an area called Matatini. There were no dangerous animals and they lived happily in peace. The king's chief heard that there were lions approaching their land. He delivered the sad news to the king. The chiefs and runners were sent to tell all the people to stay at home, to be safe from the vicious animals. Mahlombe and his family did not listen to the king's warning and went out moving around saying he was brave enough to face the lions while he was singing and around the place. Two lions sprang on him, tore him into pieces. All the people were terrified upon hearing the sad news about Matombe and no one was seen outside his home anymore. Let's go back to the story, Great Sevens. Now I want us to identify the setting. Time was in the 1940s. The place, Mashatin. The characters, the king, his people, the chief, the lions, and the runners. Now, the dramatic action, the king calling the runners and the chiefs, telling them to spread the message that people should stay at home. Here we see Mashombe not listening, singing, saying he was brave to face the lions. The lions sprang on him, tore him into pieces. Now, the plot, we see the story moving from a happy setting to a sad mood where someone was killed. Now, we want us to say there is a current situation right now as I'm speaking to you. His Majesty King Swati III, through the voice of the Prime Minister, has warned the nation that they must stay at home because of the coronavirus, COVID-19. But my friend, there are some people who behave like Matlomb. They are moving up and down in their communities. So the moral lesson is, you will pay the price 
for not listening. So I beg you, my great servants, please stay at home. I repeat, please stay at home. Now, I want us to move on to, to look at some of the rules of writing a composition. Quickly. You use formal language, no social media language. Do not use contractions. Do not use contractions like didn't, write it in full, did not. Write neat and legible, do not overwrite, use a clean page, write good sentences, stick to the correct sentence, do not use vernacular language, use correct spelling and grammar. Here is a scenario that we must do quickly with you. You found a live snake in the bedroom. You must be able to unpack the question. You, yourself, you, yourself, found a live snake, not in the forest, but in the bedroom. Write a story of what happened. The structure looks like this. There is a title, which should be short and eye-catching, should be centered. We can use two forms of writing it. You, you capitalize all the letters or just write a capital letter at the beginning of each word except for the articles, like in this example. Now, after the title, we get into the introduction, which should be striking, appealing, arouse interest, interest. It should have a hook. There is a picture there. There is a fisherman in the boat and a fish. The fisherman is trying to catch fish using a hook. The fish is attracted to the hook. Then the introduction should also be like that. The reader should be hooked into reading more. Introduces the characters. It gives us anxiety, the time, place, and mood. Like I've got three examples of uh, introductions here. Not that these are the only ones. There are many. We have a setting. It was on the 3rd of April 2020 when I walked into my bedroom and I got a shock of my life. A shock of my life is the hook. The reader would want to know what really happened when he got into the bedroom. Direct speech is another one. Help! Help! That was my scream when I found a huge snake in my bedroom. A narrative can also begin with a flashback. That is a scene taken from the past. This scene does not appear in the story, but it is taken from the past and relevant to the story. For example, my father would always warn us about snakes and we did not take it seriously. In the story that you are going to write, you will not mention this, but you have just taken a scene from the past to introduce your story. Now the development of the story or the body. How the story began, what happened, the problem and how it began, the reaction of the characters, the conflict, drama, up to the climax, how it was solved, who helped in solving the problem? How long did it take to, to get help? Now, my dear grade sevens, the last aspect is the conclusion. Here, we get the moral of the lesson, the feelings, and the advice. Now, the feelings. I was happy when the snake was taken maybe by the game rangers I'm afraid, I'm afraid, my friend, to say uh, the snake was killed because the animal conservation people may frown at me. The advice. It is better to close windows early before 
a sunset to avoid snakes. Now, my dear grade sevens, we say a narrative is a series of events told or written in the past, future, or present. We also looked at the elements of a story, the setting, the plot, characters, the dramatic action. We went through a story so that we could identify these elements. And also, we went on to touch on the structure, on how you should structure your composition when you are writing it. We touched on the title, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Thank you for viewing. Thank you so much. Um, viewer, um, sorry, sir. There's a question from the viewer which says, can you please explain the word plot? Thank you, Lerato. You're welcome. Plot simply means how the events unfold in the story. How the events come, the order of the events. You don't have to jumble up events when we are telling or writing up a story. The plot is how 